This is easily one of my favorite looking muscles in the human body. This is the rectus femoris. It is one head to a really big muscle called the quadriceps femoris. But the reason why it's one of my favorite looking muscles is because it's an example of a bipennate muscle architecture, which just means two feathers. So if we look at it, close, at it closely, you can see there's a central tendon running down the center of the muscle. And then on either side, you have muscle cells going at oblique angles, but they're perpendicular to each other. It creates kind of like a chevron shape as you kind of just mirror it from one side to the other. And what's happening here is we are then able, due to this architecture, to put a higher number of muscle cells in a small amount of space, right? Like imagine if the muscle cells were really long and they were running the lengthwise with the whole muscle, right? So you could have really long muscle cells, but you wouldn't be able to fit near the amount that you could by simply making them shorter and then putting them at this angle. And when it comes to muscle strength, the more muscle cells that a muscle has, the stronger it becomes. But the consequence of that, the trade-off, is that you reduce the range of motion because how this works is all these muscle cells they can only scrunch right they contract a teeny tiny little bit and they pull on that central tendon but the, since there's so many of them it kind of adds up and still you end up with range of motion right it's not like there's no movement that this muscle can produce it's just that it's far less than it would have been had the muscle cells been running lengthwise with the muscle, right? It's just the trade-off. That's what you get by pinnating a muscle or feathering it, is you just reduce its range of motion, but you increase its strength. And to me, the rectus femoris has just always looked really, really cool. But like I said, this is not technically a muscle, right? Like when I'm teaching this in the classroom, I teach this is a muscle, but that's more of a product of convenience, not necessarily a product of real anatomy. And what I mean is the rectus femoris again, is one head to the quadriceps femoris, which is a four-headed and gigantic muscle. We can see like the vastus medialis here is one other head. Then the vastus lateralis over here is another head. And then deep to rectus femoris is the fourth head called the vastus intermedius. But all of them, or the reason why they are one muscle is because they all share a common tendon called the quadriceps tendon. And that's exactly what you can see here with the rectus femoris. So you can see the muscle belly and then it's transitioning into this tendon and that tendon is then blending into the patella or your kneecap. Now the patella is an example of a sesamoid bone. You know, sesamoid bone is just a bone that is developing and growing inside of a tendon. But then coming out of that tendon is a bunch of connective tissue that we call the patellar ligament, right? Because ligaments connect bone to bone. And sure enough, here's one bone and then here's the other. But it's connecting to this bump on the front of your shin that you can feel yourself called the tibial tuberosity. And in fact, all four quadriceps are going to insert at that tibial tuberosity via the patellar ligament and the quadriceps tendon. But the rectus femoris is unique among the quadriceps because it doesn't attach to the femur at all. The others do. That's that's their whole point. But the others do not cross the hip, whereas the rectus femoris does. So if we go all the way up here, what it's attaching to is an area called the anterior inferior iliac spine, which yes, that is a mouthful. It's just a bump on, on the os coxa or your hip bone that's right below. You see this bump right here. You can feel this one. It's on you. It's just on the front of your hip. That's called the anterior superior iliac spine. Again, another mouthful. So right below it is the origin of the rectus femoris, which means, again, it's not anchored at all to the femur, which is why you can do this right now. Just, you can kind of, if you put your hands on your thigh and you just, you can slide rectus femoris around. It's just flipping and flopping all over the place. In fact, there's another muscle that does something like that. It's called the biceps brachii up in the brachium because the biceps brachii is also not attached to the humerus. And so you can kind of like move your biceps all around. But that's because this muscle is really here for movement. And so what I want to do is we're actually going to scroll up. By the way, we're using a 100% free Ken Hub article and we're going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description below so you can explore this yourself. 
but I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. And what I've done is at the top of our articles, we like to embed videos if we have one that is relevant to what the article is discussing. And now these videos are a premium feature, but I just want to show you the value that comes from these videos because I've gone ahead and skipped to the functions and we could get to actually see what the rectus femoris is capable of. So I'm going to hit play and actually let's, let's make this bigger and let's hit play and we can just kind of watch as this is going so you can see rectus femoris here in red and then as it tilts it what you're going to see is that since it's crossing the hip it is causing flexion of the hip and as it does that it's also though going to be having an action at the knee and that is going to be this extension of the knee like you are kicking a ball in fact there's a reason i say that is because this muscle is oftentimes considered to be the kicker's muscle. Like you see this with say like, you know, uh, football. So you can see like here with soccer um, or in American football, a punter will kick this very straight leg kick. You can see that with a ballerina. Um, really, really interesting how uh, the rectus femoris works because I want you to know, and we'll kind of go back down here and just look at a real quick picture of all of the quadriceps together all of them are going to extend the knee, right? That's the purpose of the quadriceps. But rectus femoris extends the knee while flexing the hip, which is a just unique action among the quadriceps. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is all part of a 100% free Ken Hub article. And just so you know, the Atlas images are also 100% free. So again, we're gonna leave a link down in the description below. Strongly encourage you to check that out. But if you really enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like. Small things like that actually go a long way in the all powerful YouTube algorithm and this video performing well. Also, while you're down there, go ahead and leave a comment letting us know what else you'd like us to discuss in future videos. But thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you next time.